So one of the big questions a lot of people have been talking about is, will Doppelganger Natali replace anybody in the Star Expedition team? Well, we don't know just yet because it's going to be a little bit while longer, but there are some things to talk about, and I want to test a couple things live here to see exactly how they work. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. We're going to see how this damage dealer support whatever is weird rangers are support heroes now we're going to see if this is the third ranger transcendence hero you want to add to your star expedition team <laughs> What's up guys, Barry Game here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be checking out to see how her abilities actually work. One of them mainly being how her like basic attack works, how her debuffs work, can they replicate on the same single target or do they have to be multiple? And to help us do that and decide what happens, we actually added our free to play account where we just put our Hyperspace Hunter Isla Mock in the team. Now, she's definitely going to be a lot stronger than him. Not too much stronger. Really, it's just going to be the passive damage that we're getting on our account. And, of course, she has more sublimation. But I want to see how this actually turns out. I picked him because he's going to be the tankiest hero on our team here. So he gets that little attack in right there. We got to wait to see. Okay, there is one of those debuffs there. So it goes up to two. is interesting she does give herself buffs which honestly it looks like she replicated her own buffs to a second stack which is interesting um and then you'll notice yeah the stacks just keep climbing up which is interesting um i wish i had a stronger hero to test against uh but it kind of is the strongest unless we go for the mock man here um but it does seem interesting enough that it does seem to work on single target hits Man, I didn't realize how many, like, debuffs he put out there. Holy cow. Uh, let's see. So we're at two right here on that debuff. He actually managed to hit that stun, which is pretty strong. Uh, so we hit another. Oh, my gosh. She's just nuking him down. Okay, let's try something real quick. You get nothing. <laughs> you get absolutely nothing to see how this will actually work out. So... Hopefully she doesn't hit nearly as hard. She still hits very, very hard. He does get his own counterattack. This is weird because we got two counterattack heroes in the house here. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it works. She heals for a ridiculously high amount as well. He gets his attack off. He's going to get an active off too, which might actually do a decent amount of damage. There's the counterattack. There's the hits. Yeah, so it does look like debuffs can be replicated. So basically what I'm taking away from this testing here today is two different things. Number one, you guys have seen this on uh, Lord Giga's account that we used a bunch yesterday. A bunch of videos came out today as well. Uh, essentially, yes, this guiding glow ability can basically stack because <sighs> it's interesting. I... You wouldn't be able to think, it's, since it's considered a skill effect, you'd think each one of these wasn't an individual buff. But essentially what's happening is she's able to replicate her attribute buffs on herself as well. This is a really interesting hero. She does, of course, have good HP healing and stuff. But again, she's only good for two targets. But if we're talking about Star Expedition, you're going to have your Lord of Fear Aspen or Vesa. And you're going to have her. If she's feeding him all these extra buffs, the question is, does this take the place of either a Heart Watcher or an Olivia? Both of them giving absolutely insanely good buffs to your team. Because let's be honest, we're not going to be replacing the other two heroes. One of them being Queen, because Queen has that Royal Guard, 24% additional uh, all damage dealt. And then you also have Freya giving you additional damage to poisoned enemies. Both things that are very good at scaling. However, hers don't really necessarily scale. They're just additional attack. And when you're talking about 16% attack in combat, you already have a ton of attack multipliers in game. It's not going to be a huge, huge deal. But the holy damage and the crit damage might be something to actually pay attention to. Because between this and the new treasure train treasure, uh, hitting that crit damage cap is so much easier for those of us who have spent. If you haven't spent, then it's even more valuable because you won't have this guy right here giving you literally 50.7 crit damage, making it very, very easy 
to cap out on it so there's a lot of flexibility going into this year and uh yeah the sublimations are very very strong in this as well now the other thing we were testing let's actually just jump into the tree it's easier to show off uh so double nature when self or an ally with bright blessing is under basic attack you're going to do extra damage so what this means is you're essentially your main damage dealer lord of your aspen is going to be able to do additional attacks as well as lower the crit on the enemy now <sighs> The crit on the enemy is not as big of a deal, but if we're having a hero that can replicate stuff, it's going to be interesting to see because everybody's Lord of Fear Aspen is different. If you don't have 100% armor reduction, getting an armor debuff on them might be a huge thing to do. There's a lot of different things that are pretty cool. And then off also down here, there's 100% chance to replicate two random attribute reduction effects from the target to frontline enemies. And as we just saw there in that little PvP battle against uh, Hyperspace Hunter Islamok, you can replicate them to a single target. So if there's only one target alive, they have debuffs, you can replicate those debuffs onto the same target it's not like you have to shift them to other targets and shift them back so i think that's how delacium works honestly i don't think delacium works with a single target i think you need multiple correct me if i'm wrong not actually sure about that um the only downside with this hero like i was saying is that the bright blessing can only go to one ally with the highest attack and that is going to be your lord of your aspen or your fairy queen vest either way that's a lot of strong buffs and then you also have these sublimations so when self or target with bright blessing is under a basic attack or takes damage from an active skill additionally reduces the attacker's attack by six percent uh that could maybe come in and play a part when we're talking about using the four star imprint uh sacrifice that is a very very rare drop to get in star expedition but that might help survivability in those rare situations and then of course all enemies will receive the replicated attribute reduction effects from the target with undying shadow so this is the only thing i was wondering about is if you don't have this one can you replicate it to the same target and i'm not quite sure i know a lot of people are pretty much saying this is going to be her bread and butter essentially saying that every, i mean you're literally replicating all those attribute reduction effects to everybody um that's absolutely insane because undying shadow is going to be the highest attack enemy that's where a lot of your debuffs go in combat from all different heroes even in a pvp scenario that seems really good then of course we got the other one here at the beginning of the battle and at the end of each or when she comes in at a as a substitute she's going to give that undying and bright blessing to the highest attack for each of them there's also a shield involved which is nice because it does increase some holy damage so that's a nice little benefit and then down here there's a couple other changes here uh, additionally increases self damage reduction by 30 percent for two rounds and effect of being healed that's more for like a pvp scenario i feel like not really for what we're talking about in star expedition and then the last one grants fluorescent shield to self and the ally with bright blessing when self is uh, at lower than 30 percent. again this shouldn't really proc for majority people if you are having that uh, just a barely not surviving this will play a clutch one uh the basic not really gonna be that big unless like i said this one right here could be big because it reduces frontline enemies armor by 18 percent and block by 18 percent so if you don't have 100 percent armor break on your uh, main damage dealer this is actually going to play a role and you probably want to invest at least into the deep sublimation because those things are going to help out a lot uh, on the active skill there's just going to be more additional like damage layers and stuff like that more healing not really something we care about and then lastly, I want to talk about her core because her core might be one that could be useful. We do not have it yet. We haven't decided what we're actually getting from this event yet. But if you do look at it and you have a ton of cores, if you can get it all the way up to level eight, it's pretty interesting. When the battle starts and when the round ends, there's a 100% chance to inflict one random effect from the following on all enemies. Every single enemy is going to get one of these debuffs. Uh, or rather, one of these debuffs is going to all the enemies. Meanwhile, one enemy with the highest speed will be inflicted with one extra effect, reduces control immunity by 15% for two rounds, reduces speed by 60 for two rounds, or reduces energy by 30. That could actually be really huge considering, a l I mean, some teams go with like melodic strings actives, and if that's that target, guess what? That melodic strings ain't gonna do much for you anymore. Also, 100% chance to grant one random effect to the following to all allies. Increase holy damage, uh, control immunity, or crit damage. So the holy damage or crit damage could be of use in a way uh, if we're talking about like Star Expedition, but it's not probably as good as other ones. I just want to touch on it because we didn't really talk about it too much the other day. Uh, she seems like she might be a candidate though for a Star Expedition team. Maybe next time we'll have to test it out, see if she's better than Heartwatcher, maybe better than Olivia. 
that seems a little far-fetched we'll have to see hopefully you guys enjoy this one let me know what you guys think about this hero so far i'm loving her i actually might bump her up to an eight out of a ten here pretty soon a uh, really solid support hero and i'll see you guys next time